Hi everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. One of the uh, most requested subjects that comes up in my training classes is how to add a 3D chamfer to a part using a chamfer tool. So shout out to Tim Paul for Autodesk for giving me a hand on uh, some methodology for doing this. And this video is going to cover the process for how we can add a 3D chamfer to a part like what I have on the screen. We can see some of the pitfalls of this toolpath and some of the places that it's going to work pretty well. We'll also look at a way where we can use a different method for creating uh, a 3D toolpath if we need the chamfer to be an exact specific size all the way around the part at the same time. So what I have drawn is a pretty simple part. And if we look at the angle of this slope, it's going to be 12 degrees. And if we look at the angle of this slope, it's going to be 30 degrees. So we have a fairly shallow slope and we have a, a much steeper slope on one side of the part. So let's jump over into CAM and we will go ahead and start adding our chamfers onto this part. So I'm gonna switch over to manufacturer and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a setup. I'm not too concerned about where the work coordinate system is located in this particular case. All I really care about is that the Z direction is facing the right way so I can get a toolpath added. And it is, so we're gonna move over to the stock tab. Another thing I'm going to do with this part is I don't want to take the time to rough and do like a surfacing pass to finish it. So we're going to set the mode to be a from solid and I'm going to select the solid body as the stock as well. So the part and the stock, the model and the stock are the exact same piece. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now I have enough uh, information here that I can go ahead and start creating a toolpath. So the number one question I get is why can't I just choose 2D contour or 2D chamfer. And when I select those tool paths, I'm gonna go grab a tool and I'm gonna go look in my uh, Haas library and I'll grab tool number seven, my quarter inch 45 degree chamfer mill. And I'm gonna go to my geometry tab and on my geometry, I'm gonna select this chain of geometry. Now watch what happens when I click on it. What Fusion does is it flattens that geometry down to the lowest plane. And obviously I'm not gonna get such a good part if I try to run this. So the 2D contour or 2D chamfer toolpath is not going to give me the result that I'm looking for in this particular case. So I'm going to hit cancel and let's see what we can do for a toolpath here. The toolpath that we're going to need to use for this particular situation is 2D and trace. I'm going to select 2D and trace and I'm going to go grab that same tool that I was just working with. And now I'm going to go to my geometry and I'm going to select this edge right here is what I want to machine. Now we see that it, uh, it picks up all the edges in their right Z heights. I'm just gonna go ahead okay and hit okay here to get my minimum amount of information and see the tool path that I get. So when I hit okay, what we see is that the tip of the tool traces exactly on the tool path that we've created. So if I were to go ahead and choose to simulate this, I can put my mouse say like right there and we notice that the tip of the tool is exactly on that line and as we trace it down the slope, it's just gonna follow the tip on there. So obviously we're not doing any kind of cutting or anything, but we're getting the tool to follow the contour, the geometry that we're looking for, so we're on the right track. I'm gonna close this out, and now I'm gonna do some refinements to the tool path. So I'm gonna edit this, and what I want is, I want to do a chamfer tip offset to drive the tool farther into my part. So I'm gonna set a chamfer tip offset in this case, I'm gonna do something like 60 thousandths of an inch. So I'm gonna put 0.06 in there. And when I type in that 0.06, notice what happens. On the uh, axial offset, Fusion set that value equal to 0 .6, 0.06. And uh, so if I just change that back to zero, you'll see that the axial offset follows along with it. So I'll change it back to 0 0.06. And the reason this is happening, if I right click and choose edit expression, it's setting it equal to chamfer tip offset plus and it's doing some formula in there. I don't really understand what the formula is and I don't really uh, care in this case, I just know that there's a formula that I don't want. So I'm just gonna hit cancel here and I'm gonna go to my axial offset and I'm just simply gonna uh, enter a value of zero. So axial offset of zero and my chamfer tip offset of 0 0.06 and when I hit okay, I get a tool path but when I simulate this, and if I put my mouse right here, what I'm gonna see if I look at this from the side now, is my tool is pretty buried into the part and the center of the tool is exactly on that edge. So my goal is to cut with the side and get the tip outside of my part so that I'm not burying the tip of my tool into my material. So let's take a look at how we can go about adjusting that. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and hit my home button here to take me to an isometric view, and I'm gonna edit my trace command. Over on the passes tab, what I'd like to do is tell Fusion the chamfer width that I wanna have. So I'm gonna tell Fusion I'd like to do a 20 thousandths of an inch chamfer width and I get that value added, and now I'm gonna hit OK, and I sort of expect Fusion's gonna fail here. So when I hit OK, it still does the tool path. Let's see if it gets what I want. So if I were to place my mouse there, it's starting to uh, potentially do more uh, about what I want. And if I pull that up, my, my mouse is, or my tip of my tool is still buried in there, and so it didn't give me the result I want, but there's a pretty simple fix that we can go to make that work out. I want to edit my trace tool path for one last time, and I'm going to go to the passes tab. On the passes, the sideways compensation is currently set to center, so the center of the tool is following the geometry. I'm going to hit the drop down, and I want to switch this to the left or climb milling. So we're going to get it to shift the tool off the side. And now when I hit OK, Fusion is going to generate the tool path for me. And when I simulate it and put my mouse somewhere on here, I'm going to see that uh, Fusion's doing the nice uh, 20 thousandths chamfer that I'm asking for. The tool's offset to one side and I'm cutting towards the top of the cutter just like I want. So let's take a look at what happens when we start doing slopes with our cutter. If I start going down the hill, you can see I'm getting close to the tip of the tool, but everything's working okay here. I can go ahead and chamfer down. However, what we're going to notice when we look at the simulation and I turn the model off is that we get a nice 20 thousandths of an inch chamfer here. And as we go down the slope, the chamfer is gonna get a little fatter simply because the, the spindle doesn't stay perpendicular to the cut. And we're gonna get our chamfer to be a little bit larger. Larger. So a quick shout out to Tim Paul from Autodesk for helping me out with some of the information in this video. Uh, Tim, if you didn't know, used to work for a major defense contractor and he has done a lot of CNC machining in his life. And what Tim discovered is that doing a chamfer this way, your kind of rule of thumb is you don't want to go over 12 degrees of slope angle. And that's why I chose that for this video. Over 12 degrees of slope angle and you start to really change your chamfer width, notably. So as we take the tool and drive it, keep driving it around, let's go back the other way. We'll drive it back down the hill this way. When I look at it here, what I'm probably gonna see is that I'm now diving my tool past the shoulder into my part, and that's gonna give me a pretty poor result. So the way that I might fix that is by doing less of a chamfer tip offset, and when I do that, I'm gonna cut closer to the tip of the tool, and I'm gonna get worse service footage for my cut. So this tool path is going to work better for shallow things than it is on steeper things. And if we simulate this, I'm gonna go to a home view, I'm going to turn off my model, so when we watch our simulation, all we're going to see is our actual stock. I'm going to choose to turn on my stock, and I'm going to set my mode to be comparison. Or maybe I'll do material for this, that'll probably look a little bit nicer. And I'll switch this to be tail for the toolpath. Now if I watch this run and let it do its thing as it goes around, we'll take a look at the simulated result when we're done is if we look at the chamfer width across the flat, it looks pretty consistent. And when it goes down the hill, uh, here if I can get this arranged quite right, what we'll notice is that it does get a little bit fat, fatter, but it's hard for my eye to see. However, when we're going down the steeper angle, you can clearly see that that chamfer is a lot wider, uh, especially down here at the bottom. So. That is the reason why, if you're gonna use this method, you really want your chamfer, your, your slope angle, I should say, to be 12 degrees or less when you're applying the chamfer. So what would we do on a part like this if we had to get a perfect 20 thousandths of an inch chamfer all the way around? In that case, I'm gonna use a 3D tool path. So I'm gonna turn on my a model, and what I did in my models here, underneath my bodies, is I created a second body, and I just have this body turned on, with this face on here. Now in this case, what I would do is I would do something like a scallop tool path, and I would choose, uh, we're gonna go grab a tool out of one of my libraries here, we'll grab it out of the Haas again, and we'll grab tool number 10, which is a 3 8 inch, uh, wrong one, we're gonna grab tool number 14, which is a 3 8 inch ball. And for my geometry, I'm gonna select the top and the bottom of my chamfers, and then on my my passes tab, I'm gonna do a couple other things. On my additional offset, 
I'm going to type in negative tolerance here, T-O-L-E-R-A-N-C-E. -E. I'm going to turn on contact point boundary, and then I can go over to the passes and specify what I want my step over to be. So maybe I'll do like 0 0.005 for this one just to get a tool path. 0 0.05, I mean to say 0 0.005, 5 thousandths of an inch. Now this may not work because I haven't specified this body as being the, the body that I want to machine. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just click OK and see what I get from my tool path here. And Fusion does it, it gets a little confused on here. So what I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn uh, this body on. I'm going to come to my setup and I'm going to edit it. I'm going to say I want to edit my setup. And for my stock body, or for my model I should say, I'm going to throw my body away and I'm going to choose body 2 as the thing that I want to machine. And now when I regenerate my toolpath over, I'm going to right click and choose to generate this. Now I should see a toolpath that goes all the way around my part. There we go. It's taking quite a few passes. We could do some things to limit that, like we could limit the number of, of passes with our tool. But when we do this with the ball, we're actually going to put the proper size chamfer all the way on. It's just we're going to have to interpolate it in with the ball of the ball mill. So hopefully that answers a couple questions about how you can go about and add a 3D chamfer to a part using both a chamfer tool or a ball end mill. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.